Hey guys, SuperSonic123 aka John here. Welcome to episode 26 of the Everton Career Mode. Of course, in the last episode we did uh, have uh, both legs of our Champions League qualifiers against um, Aberdeen. We didn't make that much progress in the BPL. Well, we have two BPL games uh, today uh, in this episode. For in the first one here we take on Stoke and in the second game we go away to Derby County. And um, that's because in the middle we had two international... Uh, World Cup qualifiers with Ireland, and uh, I did play those. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna show you just the goals, and that's gonna be right at the end of the episode. So if you're not interested in my excursions with Ireland as a national side, then well, then uh, then stop watching the video just before then. And if you are, then watch the end. That's that's, that's the reason I'm doing that, and I uh, hope you understand why. So for this tech game against Stoke, we would get up to a brilliant start here as Ross Barkley would slide in James McCl. James McCarthy and James McCarthy would finish right, uh, right into the back of the net, sliding the ball underneath Jack Butland to make it Everton one Stoke City nil. Uh, right at the start of the game, just after, uh, just after three minutes, you see there uh, that we uh, got our goal. Set forward brilliantly uh, by Ross Barkley into James McLean, and he uh, finished calmly to make it Everton one Stoke City nil. So. That was um, a great start to the game, actually. It didn't actually go under Jack Bowden, as I first se said. It actually just went over his leg. It just took a slight deflection off of his leg, but just went over by just a little bit. But Stoke would then come forward, and uh, Mame Biram Duf would make it Everton 1, Stoke 1, um, finding his way in uh, inside our defence and finishing right into the bottom corner. So disappointing there to concede, of course, but, uh, you know, uh, that was... Pretty poor defending, I will. I will admit we, the ball was given away, and then Mari Mari Biram Duf did finish right into the bottom corner. It's a very accurate shot from him, and no chance for Tim Howard in goal. So that was disappointed to go behind. What? Uh, not to go behind. To uh, can see that equalised to make it up to one stroke one. Uh, stroke would attack us again. With, uh, Jordan Shakiri finding Bojan, and he's sliding into Eric Peters. Who would uh, hack hack at the ball? To be honest, uh, shooting it wide of the goal. We were then uh, tr trying ourselves back in front with Romelu Lukaku having a shot, maybe a little side push on him by there by Mark Wilson before he took the shot, but it did go wide anyway. Again, Stoke on the attack and Mark Wijnaldum from the cross heading straight into the hands of um, Tim Howard. This was a very eventful match, rather end to end, and uh, Gerard de Lefeu, as you see here, trying to pick in Ross Barkley. And his shot was brilliantly saved by Jack Butland to keep it at Everton 1 stroke 1. And then Steve Sidwell would have a shot saved by Tim Howard. And it would be a, ha a half time Everton 1 stroke 1. So uh, it was a pretty uh, good first half. In the second half, not as much happened as you see. There were only 10 minutes remaining for our first highlight. And the ball slid into Ross Barkley, and his shot was saved very well by Jack Butland and uh, turned behind. That was the only really highlight of the second half. And. Um, so do finish Everton one stroke one. Disappointed to draw points again after getting our first win in the Premier League in the last episode against Norwich. But either way, we carry on forward through that. And uh, we do see receive a transfer offer here for Aruna Kone from Deportivo La Coruña. Uh, Aruna Kone is not in our plans for this season, so we decided to accept that offer. But uh, as you see, transfer talks did break down between um, Aruna Kone and Deportivo La Coruña as... Coney did not want to relocate, which doesn't really make sense because he's not being played here at Everton. I mean, does he want to stay on Merseyside and go to Liverpool, just across Stanley Park? I really just don't comprehend that. And as you see there, the board forcibly sold Seamus Coleman to Manchester City there. Just as I, like, finished the last hour of transfer deadline day where nothing happened, that happened. I get an email saying, player sold, Seamus Coleman has gone to Man City for, um, for £11 million. Pounds. Like, are the board trolling me? One of my best players getting forcibly sold off without my, you know, without me knowing anything about it. That's ridiculous if you ask me. And I was very annoyed because we're going to play right back now. We're going to have to play Callum Chambers rather than him than Tony Hibbert, who we would have had to play last season. I, I, as far as I remember, he did hand in a transfer request, but he completely ignored it, saying, "No, Seamus, you're staying here whether you like it or not." And maybe that was a. A poor decision at the end of the day. 
we will take on this Derby County side uh, for the second and final game of today's episode. Uh, well, discounting the Island matches, of course. And um, and we did have a usual side, except for Callum Chambers had to start the game. Obviously, with Seamus Cohn being sold off, unfortunately. Again, I'm still annoyed at the board for that decision, even a couple of hours after I recorded this. Either way, we would get the first attack here with uh, Callum Chambers uh, being brought down, but Mohamed Besic winning the ball back into Andre Carrillo, who cuts inside, and uh, he finds Callum Chambers again, who turns on the shot and finds the corner. Fantastic goal from Callum Chambers. His second for Everton. He scored against Aberdeen in the last episode, and now he scored against Derby County in this one. What a signing this could turn out to be, Callum Chambers. He's going to be getting more game time than I thought he would due to uh, the sale of Seamus Coleman, but uh, what a way to introduce yourself in your new side, man. Brilliant finish by Callum Chambers. A swivel, a swivel in a shot, and he found the bottom corner with a plum. And so, uh, hats off to you, Callum Chambers. That was a very well-worked goal, I must admit. So, uh, regardless of that, uh, Derby County... Would we'll try and get the equaliser there. Uh, Russell Martin, I believe that is, uh, finding a shot saved by Tim Howard, and he would come and he would have another shot, and that would be cleared away by Leighton Baines before he would get it again, giving it to. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that guy's name. Then uh, Stones with a block on it before uh, hitting it out of play. So, uh, oh, a nearly a horrific mistake by the Derby City goal, by Derby City, Derby County goalkeeper, giving the ball straight to Mohamed Besic. But that ball would go wide, and we would unfortunately regret that decision as John Stones did that, right? What on earth are you doing, John Stones? The ball is in the post and it's going to go wide. I did not press anything. I did not press anything. And yet, John Stones rifles the ball into the net off the underside of the bar, leaving a Derby County 1 ever to 1 at half time. I'm face palming now as I'm recording. As I'm saying this, although you're not going to see it, because, my goodness, John Stones, what a horrible decision that was. Once again, I didn't, I'm didn't. i suffering, and yet I didn't press anything. The ball was just hitting the post or going wide, one of the two. I certainly wasn't going into the corner. There was no need for John Stones to do that. And yet, the AI just automatically decided to just troll me, and... John Stone just automatically just hacked at the ball. And nine times out of ten, that would have gone to Rose into the stand, I think. But, of course, knowing my luck, he did end up going into the going into the uh, back of the net. So, disappointing that. We would try and get our lead back with uh, Tom Cleverley siding in. Andre Carrillo here. And, that, and I, I just want to know how Andre Carrillo missed this. Our new signing just hacks at it. I think that must have been a fantastic save, but it was given us a goal kick either way. So in the 19th minute here, we do have our last attempt at trying to get the three points. Uh, Tom cleverly finding James McCarthy, who f finds his way inside one and inside two, and he gets us out of jail. James McCarthy with the winning goal in the 90th minute. Derby County won, Everton two. Oh, this was so. This was such a relief when James McCarthy scored this, because we thought I had to settle for a draw, another draw. But uh, no, James McCarthy does get us out of jail. Finds this bottom corner beautifully after masterfully crafting his way inside the Derby County defence. Uh, following an interchange with Tom Cleverley. And uh, so relieved me score this because I thought John Stone's own goal was going to really bite me in the behind. But oh well, three points to three points. 12 shots to you there for Derby. Most of those in the second half and most of them totally meaningless. Um, in the grand scheme of things. And uh, as you see, in tomorrow's episode, we do take on Ajax in the Champions League, our first Champions League game, Palace and Bolton. So I'd like to just show you guys the goals from our uh, FIFA World Cup qualifiers. Cheers and Alarm. Just close the video now if you're not interested, because that's all the Everton footage that, that we have for today. So in this game against Scotland, we see uh, Shane Long heading in uh, the rebound from that uh, deflected shot by Aidan Mahidi. Once again, I didn't press anything for that, right? Not pressing something, and the A up signed to hit the ball. It didn't work out for the John Stones one, but it worked out here because Aidan McGee had his shot blocked, but then from the rebound, uh, Shane Long's header goes in off the inside of the post. It will be the only goal of that game, as we do beat Scotland 1-0 in this game. Um, 
in uh, in Glasgow. I'm assuming it's in Glasgow. It might have been Hampton Park. Uh, I don't know. Um, and then our second of the two World Cup finals comes against Finland. And Finland will get themselves the opening goal here through Puki. Uh, unfortunately, they're bad defending, I must admit. And for Puki to uh, receive that much room in the box. But regardless, I mean... Uh, yeah, disappointing there that uh, we did uh, concede this goal from uh, Puki for Finland. Uh, so we're going to lose this game after conceding that one, but uh, when we get ourselves back into the game, well, uh, I've seen in a minute, won't you? It was a good finish by Puki, to be fair. Uh, but uh, the throw in into Robbie Brady would. Uh, he did bust through. He, he was blocked off, and then Wes Houlihan finds the corner just on the stroke of half time. Making it Ireland one, Finland one, and uh, yeah, that did get us the point. Spoiler alert. Uh, that is all for today's episode, guys. So if you liked the video, please like the video, and uh, comment, subscribe if you haven't, if you're new to the channel, and stay prepared for the next episode either later on today or tomorrow morning. One of the two depends on whether I depends on how much I can get done today. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Um, we start Champions League campaign and 